All right, it's doing the little boop, 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 boop thing, which means that we will be on any minute now. And the only downside to going from Zoom to Facebook the way that we do is that I never know for sure when, when we're exactly live. But here we are, y'all. Welcome, welcome, Fit Pros. Hello, friends. I am so excited about today's episode because we are going to talk some quick fixes, some wonderful little tips and tidbits that are going to help us get relaxed, feel better, um, prevent pain. I don't know, Eileen. We'll see what she has for us. But, to, <laughs> but before we get started, you guys, what I want you to do before I introduce our guest and before we get started um, learning what she has for us for self-care, I would like for you to jump on here, please, and say hello, give me a little wave, give me a little heart or a like or a fire. When you come in and you say hello and just let me know that you are here and that you're engaging, that tells Facebook, hey, we're doing some great stuff. And then Facebook shows our posts to more people. So it's really important that I get you to get in here and say hello. I was here. <laughs> yes, I was here. Tag yourself. <laughs> so today on the Fit Pro Show, of course, in July, we are focused completely on self-care for instructors and personal trainers. So I'm trying to give you some really specific and really actionable information that will help us all to just take a minute, breathe, back up on everything that's been going on and and really um, find ways to, I don't know, be okay, be um, in a place where we can process and we can um, we can strategize and make good decisions at, in a time when it would be really easy for us to react and just uh, do things on the fly. So, Hello, I, we've got Lawrence here, Eileen. Hi. Yay, Lawrence, good to see you. Glad Hi, you're watching Puerto Rico. And we've got Pat Wilkie here. Oh, good Pat. To you from Pat and I were roommates at Lawrence's Fit Camp. Oh, no oh, kidding. It's like, it's like old times. I just need to have all of Lawrence's people on because you guys stick together and come in droves, and I love it. Because he creates Yay. an incredible community. Mm. Oh, Lawrence, maybe I need to make you a, uh, a co-admin on, on Fit Price Connect. And he's an incredible, incredible mentor. I love, I love watching him. Love watching you on the internet, Lawrence. Love seeing what you do. Okay, so let's get into it, y'all. So talking self-care, let's let Eileen introduce herself. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're at, what your background is little bit about your background with reflexology let's start there all right well first of all kelly i want to say thank you so much for having me on and for, it's such a joy and a blessing to be with you or through this time of pandemic or COVID or whatever you and i've gotten to, to know each other a little bit more and it's just been it's been an incredible joy oh, but uh you. let me introduce myself um i am a, a foot nerd and a yoga instructor a movement coach certified reflexologist. I have created a program called Solely Wellness, which incorporates yoga and reflexology and wellness from the ground up. I am a firm believer that if your foundation is strong, what sits above will remain strong. If there's weakness in your foundation, which in the human body and human anatomy is your feet, then what is above it has more opportunity to become problematic. Um, I touch S-O-L-E-S -E in a way to empower S-O-U-L-S -S because there's so much energy in your feet. And I am a very strong believer that when your feet are strong and healthy, they take your heart where it wants to go. I love that. I love that. I heard you say that a few weeks ago and I thought that was fantastic. Yeah. But I did not realize that Solely Wellness was kind of a program and a brand that you had created. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Beautiful. Tell me more about that. Well, it's, it's uh, my yoga program, uh, yoga from the ground up. And it's, it's in my yoga classes, uh, my yoga experiences, I incorporate uh, footwork, I incorporate reflexology uh, in my yoga this morning, we were working on the spine reflex on our feet. Excellent. So and so were you doing that with poses? Or were you doing that with kind of um, self manipulation? We did well, the footwork I, I put interspersed into poses. Um, we also do designated footwork time. And then uh, for the reflexology, there was one point where when, before we rolled onto our back, where we did our spinal reflex because our theme for today was uh, power and uh, holding on to your own power, creating your own power and your spine is your most powerful reflex point. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, awesome. And, and, and we'll, be, we'll be doing some um, little spinal reflex coming up. Not so much on your feet, but you can do, you can do reflexology on your feet, on your hands, your face, your ears, all sorts. Wow. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait. So I know that you are going to show us some specific points and some specific manipulations mm -hmm. and things that we can do, but first tell us a little bit just about what is reflexology. Absolutely. There's a lot of misconception about reflexology. It's a, a combination of a science and an art where through the stimulation of certain points, you can uh, bring your body into a state of homeostasis or balance or wellness through the stimulation of points that correspond to uh, glands and organs and uh, joints within within your body. So because we are all fitness professionals and, and um, nerds and know a little bit more about anatomy, how specifically does that work? Is it a, one nerve ending that runs through another place in your body or... It does, but it's also it's also energetic acupressure points. So you've got so coming off your spine, which is why your spine is your most important reflex. Um, you've got 31 pairs of nerves that innervate off your spine and go throughout your body. So in reflexology, when I do my practice, and not only when in in yoga on the mat, but I also do a I have a private reflexology practice. Not so much during COVID, but that's another story. <laughs> but, um, and uh, after I do uh, relaxation techniques, the first uh, reflex I'll work on is spine. Okay. And, 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 your, and in reflexology, your hands or your feet map your body. So the tops will be toward the top of your head. Coming down here will be more toward the bottom of your torso. So it, it, it follows the line in your body. Yeah. Wow. And there's, there's, a, there's a confusion about reflexology uh, some people have got a lovely foot massage, but it's a foot massage and a, a real ref, a true reflexologist will have gone through a reflexology school and be, um, there isn't so much a license for it, but they will be certified. Mm -hmm. So if you go to somebody who claims they're a reflexologist and you go in, for example, and say, wow, my my um, right shoulder's bothering me. Can you do something on that? And, and if you know the point and they're not working on that point, then odds are they're not a certified reflexologist. So if you want true reflexology, I recommend you ask your practitioner where he or she um, got their certification. So is that the best way to do it? If you were to, let's say, just walk in off the street and you see that they're advertising reflexology and you know that you want um, something that's going to be, you know, truer and more, um, more informed by data and science, then you're going to need to ask some questions because you're not necessarily going to see anything posted on the wall. And sometimes price will give you a hint, not always, but sometimes because Pricing, as with anything, can be all over the map. But if you're going into a nail salon and you are uh, paying $20 for what they call reflexology, I'm going to guess it's more of a lovely foot massage. Which, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that there's a difference between a foot massage and reflexology. And the reason why it does get confused is because reflexology is not licensed. So anybody can call themselves a reflexologist. It's sort of like uh, dietitians are registered. 
nutritionists maybe went to a class, maybe not. And anybody can call themselves a nutritionist, but only certain people can call themselves a dietitian. It's sort of the same thing with reflexology. Anybody can call themselves a reflexologist, but they may not be. So it's, it's really, I, it's really behooves everybody to do their homework. Okay. Okay. And the best, the best thing to do then is just to, to ask some questions and find out about exactly. the, the background and the education. Exactly. All right. And also look at the price point. Yeah. Price point. Like I said, it, it might be an indication. It might not. Um, but a lot of times it's, it's asking the questions and, and, and knowing, and, um, and I would certainly ask, are you certified? And um, maybe even say, hey, where did you get your certification? Or how many hours did it take? Because to get certified, you, I am certified personally in hands and feet. Um, and for me to get my certifications took uh, several years. Um, I'm in Connecticut and I went down to New York City to do the program. And it took me for, I did the professional program and to do ears and face and hands and feet took me uh, over 160 hours of classroom work. And it also took for hands um, 50 hours of practical and for feet 100 hours of practical submitting documentation and then getting that approved before I got my certification. So it is a it is a very lengthy and involved process. Wow. Wow. That is very lengthy and yes. involved. So and, and this this might be a question that we could best save until the end. Um, but for somebody that might be interested in learning more about becoming a reflexology professional, what would you suggest? There are reflexology schools throughout the country. Um, in massage therapy schools, they will cover reflexology, uh, a smaller point than if you go to a, a reflexology designated school, but there are reflexology schools throughout the country. Um, they might not be really very active at the moment because in a lot of places there, you can't do hands-on anything. So I, I, that I don't know, they'd have to research, but yeah. You can also go to the American Council on uh, A or American Reflexology Council Board, and that will also have a list of uh, approved schools. Okay, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. That, I think that's really helpful. So let's talk about some self reflexology. I know that you're, I, I've hinted, of course, that you're going to show us a few things. And the question I've got as my talking point is can you do reflexology on yourself? Absolutely. It is lovely when you are on the table and maybe your sheets are warm and there's lovely music playing and you've got lavender essential oil and you're relaxing and, and someone's working on your feet. That is fabulous. It's fabulous for relaxation. It's fabulous for bringing the body and, and mind into connection into homeostasis, but you can also do it on yourself as well. And you could be doing it in line at the grocery store and nobody even has to know. So it really can be done anywhere. Um, obviously hand is easier to do out in public unless you wanna kick off your shoes. But, um, but so you could literally, you could be in the grocery store and if you're feeling stressed out um, in a little bit, I'll show you a, a point to, to help with your fight or flight state. Mm, I love it. Okay, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. So, um, Okay, I've, I've got another talking point, but before we move on, show, show us something. Give, me, give us some Absolutely. <laughs> um, you, you want one point now, or do you want me to do, go through a whole, a whole uh, several points to, for... for um... I'll let you, you're the expert. Oh, I love that. Um, let's, let's come in, let's do uh, several points right now so that we can we can, um, I'll show you the points and then maybe uh, your lovely fans have questions and they can pop the questions into um, into the chat or whatever. And, and I would love to hear what people have to say. One of the things that you can do with self-reflexology, you don't have to, but it's a little bit of cream, just a, a little bit of cream. You can put a little dab on your hand. We're gonna do some hand points. So I like to do just a little bit, just a little, a little dab will do you because otherwise if you do a lot when you work on your reflexology points 
it's going to be like, you know, chasing a pig at a country fair. So So is that a little bit too much? No, that's fine. That's fine. No, that's good. And just this, when uh, my husband has deployed twice and every time he deploys, everybody buys me this. (laughs) (laughs) And now, and now it's repurposed. Yes. So just a little bit of cream on your hands, but we're going to first take your hands and palms on top of each other. Just, and just give a gentle, a gentle hold, taking a deep breath. I invite you to take in a really deep breath. Eyes can be open or closed, and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. And you're holding on to this wonderful energy that you have in your hands. You have incredible healing energy in your hands. And set an intention for you the rest of your day. Open up your hands, interlace your fingers, just like that. Open up your fingers and give a little pull and bring your hands together. We'll do that a couple more times. And this helps to relax muscles and nerves in your hands. It's good to start reflexology with a little bit of relaxation. That's really nice. That's not a movement that I've ever thought of before, but it's kind of like uh, when we do gorilla pose in yoga and you get a little bit of traction on your spine, Mm -hmm. it feels a little bit similar. When you think about it, especially with your feet and your toes, we don't get a lot of touch point in between our fingers, especially your toes. So it's really good when you're doing something, working on your feet, uh, that you can get some stimulation of muscle and tissue and um, and nerve in between your toes because we rarely do that most of the time we're in shoes. Beautiful. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to start working on your spine reflex. Your spine reflex is on your on your hand and hands and feet are very similar in their patterning. So at the edge of your thumb, this is your spinal reflex right right here right along the edge. And if you were to think of like a, like a corner or a blade of that area, like. Yeah. Yeah. And, and your spine is going to, because you're, uh, as we explained before, your reflexology maps the body. So up by by your, your thumb is going to be on your cervical. And then as you go down, it goes down toward your, toward your lumbar. So, yeah. So what I like to do is you can take your hand and Hold on to the back of your hand. And some people like to position just a little firm, or you can just hold on to the back of your hand. It's really wherever you feel positioning is is good. And take your thumb from your opposite hand. Trying to figure out, here we go. And you can slide, or you can do what we call um, thumb walking. And just do little tiny bites as you go up. And you hold on to your thumb to support. And then you're going to, come and I like to slide down and then go back up. And you can do this several times. And even though you have one spine, but two hands, you will work both hands. For today, we'll do one, but when you're working on yourself, please do both. You can slide back down and let's do that one more time little bites or little slides up and you're going at your own pace, just little bitty movements supporting your thumb as you go up. And then from there, we like to tap a little bit on your spine, almost like EFT, you know, emotional freedom technique. It's a little tap on your spine, on your spinal reflex. And that helps to release emotions that might be in your back or along your spine. And then I like to just give a little bit of love to your spinal. Now, Eileen, you'll have to tell me if I'm completely off base, but I feel like this, doing this specific movement could have um, the potential to help you to release, like, you know how you get knots along your spine right there between your shoulder blades? For some reason, I'm feeling a little bit of correlation there. Yes, absolutely, because, because your spine comes up your back. And so if there's a, and and sometimes you may feel a little, what I like to call something, something, and then you can hold there and you might press a little bit or breathe into that spot. And 
it could be that there's a muscle tightness there. It could be there an energy block there, or it could be there's something going on in that part of your back. So if there is, you, you might find a spot on your Absolutely. finger. You, can, you might hand. find a spot. Yeah. And if you do find a spot, it doesn't mean that there's something bad. Every time I work on my sister and I find a spot, her head comes off the table and she goes, what's that? What's that? What does that mean? Am I going to die? No, it's just, it's just an energy spot. So I'm not a voodoo witch doctor. <laughs> exactly. As we say, as I'm not a doctor. I, we, we don't diagnose. We just reflexologists just want you to feel really good. I love and then it. from here, we're going to go to our the solar plexus. So your spine is your most important reflexology point. We're going to your second most reflexology point. So if you trace your middle finger and come down just under your bone, the bones in your hand, you can use whatever finger you want. I, I happen to like to use my thumb just because. And um, if you're gonna do this sometimes, if you have really long nails, it's a little harder, but you can do, you can still make it work. So go right under your middle finger, under the bones, Give a press and feel free to press. You, it, you don't have to be light. If light feels good for you, please do that. If feeling a little pressure, I like to circle, a little energy circle, ah, and breathe. And this is your solar plexus right in your gut. So your fight or flight reflex. And this is a great point to really help your body come into a state of balance as well as balancing mind and heart. Now you and I did this one together the other day and yeah. I really did notice a difference because I do carry a lot of tension in my solar plexus. Yes. And um, and you mentioned something specific that, that that's related to, was it, was it um, lack of confidence or yes, worrying it about can be, it, it can this this point can help with relaxation but it can also help to build to build confidence because you because it from your fight or flight you're bringing yourself back into a state of balance it's the same thing um, another point that also works with that your adrenal point if you take your thumb and it'll get real close but if you take your thumb and you go out you'll see a little a little indent right there, right next to your muscle. Mm -hmm. So I like to take my thumb right in that point. And then your pointer finger goes up into your webbing, slide till you go up and you feel the, your bone. It'll be like a V. You feel that, Kelly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, here we go. This, this sometimes is a little sensitive. Press, like press. Yeah, yeah. that's your adrenal point. So if and you're there anxious, how long there's somewhere that you can use for self-defense on, on somebody or maybe um, I haven't heard that, but this point is also really good that when you think you're getting a headache, work this point. Beautiful. Yeah. And you've got two adrenals. They sit above your kidneys. So you will want to do both, both sides, but again, just for time, we'll, we'll do one, but that's, that's your adrenal point right there. Some people might go thumb up and point your finger below. It really is whatever feels more comfortable for you. I happen to be more comfortable this way, but it, it just depends. So you guys, I know that you are all trying these on your own, on your own oh, hands, yay. even if you're like sitting in your cubicle, <laughs> <laughs> which a lot of us are not doing these days, but um, I would love to, I'd love for you to put some comments in here. What are you, what are you getting from these different poses? Is this bringing anything up for you? Are you feeling any relief anywhere? But if you think about it, shopping is these days is extraordinarily stressful. So when you are in the grocery store and you're starting to feel anxious, you can just take a moment. It does, and it doesn't have to be long. It could be a moment or two, maybe count to five, do each adrenal point, take a breath, set your intention and start strolling through the aisles, making sure you're following the arrows. So when I do that on this hand, I do feel something different than I, when I do it on yeah. this hand. Very, very common often because the, the muscles on your dominant hand are tighter because it's your dominant hand mm. and you use that so much more. So it could be a muscle tightness. It could be that um, one side of you emotionally is, has an imbalance and it, it, that's why your adrenals are, are affected. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, and I thought that was a really interesting point about shopping being stressful. I was in a mall last night and um, first of all, everybody's wearing the mask. And then um, 
there's nobody in there. All the, all the chairs and tables are gone. Um, you can't walk into Starbucks. You can only go, you know, up to the door and then they've got like the plexiglass and you order through that. And then at seven o'clock they started closing. And I just thought, oh my, <laughs> I mean, you guys know, I, I keep on telling you, I have completely hidden my head in the sand and pretended that this is not happening. And I'm just on the internet with you guys all day. And so when I go in public, it really, it really gets to me because it's like, it, it slaps you in the face. Mm -hmm. Um, so but that's why the self reflexology is so important because when we do get stressed out, which we do in these times and we do get anxious, healing is just, it's right in your hands. Mm -hmm. Healing is right in your hands or your feet. If you're home and you want to work on your feet, or if you want to put your foot in your significant other's face and say, Hey, work on my feet you can show them the points and work on their feet. Uh. So you see, whatever, you whatever it leads to, I don't want to know. Stressed out. <laughs> I can help bring my, my honey back to balance a little bit. I wonder if he's watching. A lot of times he lurks on my show from work, even though he's not a fitness professional. Right. We need to kick him out, right? No, we need, no, we need to learn these points so he can do them on you. Are you kidding? That's, yeah. that's awesome. So yes, you can do it on yourself. You can do it on somebody else. You can go to a certified reflexologist. So reflexology gives a lot of options. And for some people, it may sound new, but this has been around. There's some people who say that it's been around since ancient China. Some people say it's been around since the Egyptians. This is, this is not a new modality. It may be new to us, but it's been around for a long, long time. Yeah. We, we tend to rely so much on, um, well, I, I think it's coming back around, but in the past, we've relied a lot on Western medicine. Absolutely. And I think that people are starting to come back around to more natural healing methods and more right. natural methods of bringing yourself just back into balance. And so this right. information, people are loving it. I'm watching the comments. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yes. Um, so Pat we said, did, I did. love the tip for the headaches pressing on yes. the adrenal gland. Yeah. So the second you think you're getting a headache, again, you don't have right in the right in your hands you can go there and that one again is the fingers are coming in this way and then you're pressing at that so if you look, there's a little indent yeah, right where the muscle is and mm -hmm. then right at the where your bones make a v at the webbing you go to the webbing and slide all the way up till you hit a dead end and give a press give a big press and that's your that's your hand adrenal point Beautiful. On your foot, it would be in the same area. Um, so on your foot, underneath the ball, like right at the ball of your foot, underneath your big toe. So it's mm -hmm. going to be in that area. You, you won't reach, but you will just, you'll work into that spot. So on your foot, it corresponds. Hands and feet, very similar. Almost the same amount of bones. Structurally, very similar. So you're where you, if you're not sure where to work, and there's tons of maps on the internet, you can always look, but it, see where it is on your body. Take a pretty good guess. If you know where it is on your hand, it's going to correspond to your, to your feet as well. We did a lot of plantar side. Let's do some dorsal side. Love it. Top of your hand, chest, breast, lung. So making a fist and you're going to see space in between your bones. These are your, in, what's called your interosseous spaces. I like to take your thumb and go from your knuckles going right between. I, I go from starting with a pointer finger, your thumb's going to tuck under and go from in between your knuckles and slide to your wrist. When you get to your wrist, you might find a little bit of a divot in your wrist. You find that Kelly? Mm -hmm. Just, a, just a, a really small little divot. Circle your thumb in there. That's one of your lymph points. So are you saying when you go over the bottom of your, of your metatarsal there, the bottom mm -hmm. of your finger bone, then that divot right there? So you divot at the wrist. Yes. So you're going to slide in between the bones, going down to your wrist as much as you can, pat the end of your hand right at your wrist. And you might feel, and it's going to be different on everyone because everyone's bone structure is just incrementally different. But if mm -hmm. you, you may have to move around a little bit, fish around a little bit, and you'll find your, your spot. And I like to press and circle to help with your lymphatic system. All right. Because if you think about it, chest, breast, lymph. It's all your whole, your, the human body is fascinating mm -hmm. and it's all connected. So each hand, 
And then the second one, you're going to go down and just go to your and going to your wrist. And then you're going to go between your middle finger and your ring finger, go down. And you might find a little point there as well and work that point. Just give a little, little circle, a little something, something. And then your between your fourth and fifth. And that helps. So if you're in, if you are somewhere, let's say going back to the grocery store, let's say you're going to the grocery store and you're getting anxious and you're feeling like you're getting short of breath, you can start working your interosseous spaces and chest, lung. So it'll help to open up your airways. Oh, that's really good. So you could yeah. use that in combination with the tool of Absolutely. breath, which of course is the the most available tool you've got for self-regulation. Absolutely. You can conjunction. And, and one of the things too is, I go, again, going back to the grocery store because it's stressful. Um, you, you do that. You take a few seconds. You do this. Nobody has any idea what you're doing. And you're calming yourself down. Beautiful. And, and so, it, so then you can go back to your breath and be mindful of your shopping and try as much as you can to enjoy the experience rather than focusing on your, on your fear. So Jennifer made a comment that she's been getting her feet done for 15 plus years on a weekly basis until a girl. COVID. Yeah. We may need you to do a whole workshop for us since we can't go anywhere right now. Absolutely. How do you do it yourself? Yeah, and there's and there's um, so much footwork that you can do. And even if you don't, um, you want to work your feet, and you don't even know some of the points. I just happen to have a little show and tell. Uh huh. I happen to match my shirt. Um, a ball. Roll your foot on on your on the ball, and start with your arch because you've got several layers of muscle there, and and roll and then roll along your foot. And it, it isn't technically reflexology, but you're gonna be getting reflexology points. Mm -hmm. And it will help open up your muscles. It helps open up the 33 joints in your foot, in each foot. And it will also help release some tightness in your feet. So ball rolling is, is great if you, if you don't wanna do reflexology on yourself or you don't have a partner to do it for you. It's not technically reflexology, but it's a, it's a close cousin. So ball rolling is, is great. Beautiful. And I incorporate that into all a lot, a lot of my, um, my yoga classes, a, a quick funny story is one of the first times I did it in my chair yoga class. And I brought in a, a bunch of tennis balls. You can do cross balls, tennis balls, golf balls are hard and they're a little smaller. It takes a little more, but it still works. And I brought them in and we were in this little room. I gave them out and they all started they were apprehensive about taking off their shoes and socks, but they did it. And then they started rolling. Well, they were moaning and I, I'm moaning. And I said to them, oh my goodness, if somebody walks down that hallway, they will have no idea what we are doing in here. <laughs> so, they're never going to invite me back or they're going to invite me back a whole lot. <laughs> exactly. But it, most of them had never done any ball rolling or any work on their feet before. And so it felt so good. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. So ball rolling, even though you're not necessarily um, hitting one specific point, you'll kind of hit. You'll hit a lot. And my proxy. And going back to how your hands and feet map your body. So whether it be hand or foot, the area in the, in your palm, that has to do with digestive. Mm. So if you ball roll on this part of your foot, you're also helping to open up some of your digestive system. Oh, Everything in your body is connected. If you go back to the old song, uh, your thigh bones connect. It's true. Yeah, it's really true. You guys, so you know what I, I would love? And um, Eileen, I apologize. I don't think we're going to put you on the spot too bad, but I'm going to ask them to just put any questions or maybe love specific it. areas that they're having trouble with, you know, sleep or um, yeah. emotional regulation or, or, um, headaches Love it. and let's see let's 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 see how how we can help the most people who are watching live right now that is awesome i love that thank you okay so while they're putting their questions in let's see um let's talk about barefoot we haven't really talked much yet about going barefoot i'm a barefoot girl 
It's so important. I've got my slippers on right now. Uh. <laughs> Come off, Kelly. Free your feet, girlfriend. Because remember, it's Terrific Tuesday. It is Terrific Tuesday. Okay, they're coming off. Thank you. Make me happy. <laughs> uh, think of all the hours your feet are in shoes. What happens when your feet are in shoes? Your toes get all smushed together. Just as we were doing this to ignite some energy in between your fingers. And another thing you can do is what we call crab walking. You want to do a little love to your hands. You can take your fingers and do a little, a little walking down the sides. And that also feels really good. Mm -hmm. And that's stimulating just as you need to work in between your toes because your toes spend so much time like this. Think about if your hands were like this all day long. That's what's happening to your toes. Wow. So it's important for you to get space between your toes. Never thought about it. So is there a similar movement that we could do to that for our feet? On your feet? Sure. Um, I, I won't hoist my foot up into the camera, but you human, human um, toe spreaders or well, I don't have them with me, but toe spreaders. Oh, you put your feet in toe spreaders for however long you can tolerate during the day. And that puts space in between your toes. But if you don't want to invest in toe spreaders, you've got natural toe spreaders. Put your fingers right between your toes. It will feel a little awkward at first, most likely. And you may not get your fingers down toward the webbing because your toes are used to being so tight. But what you can do is you can put, let's say this was my foot, put your fingers in and you can do a little, a little pumping you can do a little wiggling and you're activating nerve, connective tissue, muscle in between your toes. I love it. I would have never thought of that on my own. Yes. And it's, it's your feet are your foundation. They're strong. You think about anybody of any age you've ever known who's ever developed a foot problem, whether it be plantar fasciitis, Morton's neuroma, a plantar wart, whatever prevents them from walking a lot because it, it's painful, it changes your life mm -hmm. because you become immobile. And then yes. all the things that happen because you beco are becoming more and more immobile because your feet are problematic and it's painful every time you take a step. So you keep your feet strong and healthy, which why that's my theme. It takes your heart where you want to go. If you have problems with your feet, you're not going anywhere. Wow. And it's a I little self-care you can do every a few minutes every day. A little bit of investment in every day gives you a really bright future. Eileen, such good information. I had no idea. Yeah. I so full disclosure, Eileen is in the virtual studio business academy with me and a business accelerator. We're calling it the business accelerator. And um, we were talking the other day and that was the first time I really understood the depth of her reflexology practice. And, um, and so I said, I really want you to come on, but I thought I didn't have time in July because we had, we originally had a shaman coming on today to talk about holistic wellness and then she could not come on. So she'll come on in September sometime. And I, I immediately thought of Eileen and wanted, wanted you to come on, but man, I had no idea. Yeah, your feet are awesome. We don't often think of our feet because let's admit it, they're not overly attractive, but they're very functional. But, and I, you know, there may be people out there saying, well, my feet are really attractive. And they might- Some people be, really like- <laughs> Some people love their feet. I, I'm let thinking me, of I, the, I, I a long time, time ago, I, I tried to um, sell some used shoes on eBay and it got real weird real quick. Yeah, no. I mean, that's different when somebody, because they sweat, no. But, um, but I'll tell you actually how things come full circle. There was a time where I would not wear sandals that showed my feet, like my toes or anything. I just thought I'm not doing that. And I would only buy sandals that were covered or shoes, not happening. And then uh, the more I began to learn and do barefoot fitness, and I realized that there's so much energy and function and importance to your feet. And now, not only do I wear 
my feet are exposed all the time because I'm hardly ever in shoes. So it's going all the way around. And, and I am just such a proponent of the importance of connecting your feet to earth. It's called earthing. There's so much energy in your in Mother Earth that you can connect to your feet. One of the recommendations is if you're ever in a plane, because you're flying above, when you can, obviously not maybe not the airport, but when you get to your destination, kick off your shoes and spend some time with your feet on grass or dirt or pavement or something. Not, not so much pavement, but even just earth, so that you can reconnect your feet to earth mm -hmm. that makes and there's sense. so much energy that you can bring up through mother earth into your into your feet oh sorry about that so um i see a few really great questions here i think we've got three here that we've got time to get to and then if i don't get to you i'm really sorry hopefully um myself or eileen can come Absolutely. in here and get them later. But the first one is from Jennifer, anything for the forearm in terms of trigger points? Yes, um, so I'll, uh, I'll show hand. So if your shoulder point is here, your arm is gonna be down here, your shoulder, arm. Mm -hmm. Or if you're doing, if you're doing, um, you can come down your, let me, let me do this, you can come down your pinky you can slide down your pinky. So go all the way down your pinky side, your lateral side, and you'll see a, you'll feel a little bit of a divot there and you can work in there. And so you've coming from shoulder down, all the way down your arm into that point. That'll start to release. It, it can, I mean, no guarantee, but that's, if you wanna help bring energy to that area of your body, absolutely. Beautiful, I love that. And if anybody has any questions that maybe they think of later, they can always reach out to me and send me an email. And um, if you see my name there, so it's Eileen at EileenBurns.com and I'll, I'll be able to help you out. Thank you. That's a good one. And of course we are all in this group together and we, um, as members of the group, we can message each other on Facebook if, if that's all right with you. That they no, would. it's fine. I would love it. Love it, love it, love it. Best points to press for a sinus headache. Oh, sinus. So think if let's let's go back to where it is in your body. Sinus here. So on the pads of your fingers, your brain is the top of each finger. Pads of the fingers. So like right, right there or where you put, you know, you might put your lotion when you're doing. And you can use whatever finger you want, and you're gonna press into that point and circle. And then you go down to each finger. Go down the line. Oh, I'm releasing. I can feel myself release a little bit. Yeah. So it'll happen pretty quickly. It can. It might. If not, just keep doing it. Yeah. And and you may it may not give you a release, but energetically you're bringing your body into as much homeostasis as you can in that moment. So you get two hands, and you do the same points on on each hand, and that's and that's for sinus opening up. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. One, one more. And then, like I said, if we, um, if we have more that come in, because most people watch the fit pro show on replay, we mm -hmm. will only get maybe a 10th of the, of the viewers during the live show, and then we'll get a lot of replay. So please submit your comments. Cause I, Eileen and I are in here and we can try to answer questions as okay. they come in, even if you're watching on the replay. So the last one that I'm going to be able to get to today is, um, is there a spot that could help to reduce tightness between the shoulder blades? Yes. Shoulders. So up in your upper back, shoulders. And it's interesting when we do, when I work on somebody in a private session and I have them do a health release form, one of the questions I ask is, where do you carry most stress in your body? And I have to tell you 95% of, of people respond shoulders. Yes. So the point for shoulders, um, same on your hand as your foot, right underneath your fingers. So you can, you can go across, you can slide your finger, you could do a little, a little walking across. You might go back. 
And so that is, that is your shoulder reflex. Beautiful. Your, yeah. Um, and so it's, it's this, that's your like shoulder and neck reflex. And if you, if you have an issue in, in your shoulder, so if this is your right hand, if you've got an issue in your right shoulder, your right hand, you're going to work the spot and the spot for shoulder, the little point right there, it's probably about the size of a quarter or so right under your pinky. You're going to go from the outside and you can either slide or walk up. And oh, I really feel something happen when you yeah, do it. And you do three passes. So you get in that whole spot and you might do that several times and that's shoulder. So if you carry tension in shoulder and neck, my recommendation would be to do neck a couple of times and do shoulder. So you're getting into both of those spots. Oh, you're going to see me doing that all the time now, because that is where I hold my tension. My, to the point that my shoulders are not flexible. My yoga participants have way more flexibility than I do in my shoulders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if someone's going locally, who's on, on your show and they see you in the grocery store and you're doing this, they'll be like, I know what you're doing. <laughs> they sure will. They sure will. You're all you might see me doing it on the show too. <laughs> exactly. Eileen, so many people in the comments are saying, um, I miss my weekly massage. I used to have this done weekly. Yeah. I, um, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, Eileen needs to make this her, uh, her monthly subscription offer where yeah. she does a 15 minute reflexology, self reflexology class twice a week. And, and we can all come in and just join you for it. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and now it's all, all the more important because you may not get to your massage therapist or your reflexologist that you do this to yourself for not to yourself, but for yourself. Great point. And, and as fitness professionals, and let me tell you, I am extraordinarily guilty of this pre COVID. I was teaching incessantly and I didn't realize how tired I was, how fatigued I was not only physically, but emotionally mm -hmm. until I was forced to stop. Yes. And now it, it has really, you know, self-care. There have been a lot of discussions in that group and we haven't had that recently, but uh, we've had a lot of discussions originally about um, how, how people were, were finding that their health was different because the way that they taught and the way that they treated their body had forcefully changed because of the quarantine. Absolutely. I will tell you that my Fitbit sleep numbers since I'm working a little bit, but certainly not to the extent where I was, my numbers, my sleep numbers have gone up considerably. Beautiful. Okay, so on that note, I'm going to end it. I've been trying to make these shows like 45 minutes. I never make it. You guys know I talk too much. <laughs> well, that's because, that's because when it comes to reflexology, I could go on and on and I, it's so exciting for me. It's so I, 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 think I love it. I love the human body. I, I really think we have really touched on something for you in terms of, um, we're going to be talking more about this. We'll be talking more about this. <laughs> okay, my friend, thank you so much. So you've given us where to find you. Will yes. you also throw that into the comments for Absolutely. us just where people can get a hold and of you? Any questions, feel free to reach out, send me an email, message on, on fit pros. You find me on Facebook. Um, and, uh, any, any questions, I'm, I'm happy. And if it's happy to, to talk to you, and if it's something that, uh, because it's so visual, uh, if it's something that you really are struggling with, we might even be able to hop on Zoom. But yeah, so to reach me, Eileen at EileenBurns.com. Beautiful. Eileen, thank you so oh, much. Oh, Kelly, my time. joy. Thank you so much. It this is so, so awesome. And to all of your fit pros and to Lawrence and everybody in mentoring, Heart. One, one heartbeat, one heartbeat, all of us. We're all in this together. Okay. So before I sign off, um, let me see, what do I need you guys to know right now? Um, we are, we've got one more session on self-care. And so Thursday, I'm going to come back on. And what I would like to do is just kind of highlight and summarize some of the best points that I've heard you guys make about self-care in the, um, in the group. So, you know, I poll and survey you guys constantly. I'm just going to kind of come back and summarize what you guys are telling me. And then maybe I'll add a few points if I have anything I 
that I think could be relevant. Um, and the the July version of the Go Virtual and Get Paid Challenge is going on right now. So all of the videos from the May and June Go Virtual Get Paid Challenge are in a group. It's a self-led group and you can find that group at virtualstudionow.com slash self-led-challenge. That will get you to, um, that'll get you into that group so that you can go back if you're interested in watching all of those videos. In August, I'm really thinking we're going to change that up a little bit and we're going to do it as a boot camp. And it's going to be the sell out your online workout boot camp. Because what I'm hearing you guys say right now is that you're struggling the most with figuring out kind of where your online audience would be and how you would fill up an online workout. So that's what we're going to be looking to do in August. So if you want to go back and access those, go virtual. Um, videos do that now and in August we're going to move into a little bit of a different subject area. We'll still cover a lot of the same material but we'll do a little bit um, more about growing a group and a little bit less about what are the little technical issues about going live because I think most of us have that by now. So virtual is here to stay. Uh, that is the truth. Any requests, comments, please send them my way. I am here for you guys. This is this is my uh, my passion, and and I just love you guys, and so I love serving you. And please um, let me know what you need from me, and I'll be happy to try to get it. And Eileen, thank you again. Love you so much. And a reminder: when your feet are strong and healthy, they take your heart where it wants to go. Love it. Beautiful. Perfect. Perfect way to end. All right. We will see you soon. Peace out. <laughs>